thoroughly read the protocol that came in the kit box. We constantly update the kits and the protocols that come with the kits to improve the performance and so look for revisions to the protocol. Contact us prior to using the kit if any of the instructions are unclear. Reagent warm-up. Take the kit box out of the fridge or freezer. Unpack the kit box to let the reagents warm to room temperature. Note any precautions with thermally labile solutions such as with our PKA activity kit KO27-H1. Desiccated reagents. Allow any components that contain desiccants such as our Detect X coated immunoassay plates to warm completely to room temperature. Opening desiccated packs prior to reaching room temperature will allow warm damp air to settle on the cold component and hydrate it. This may damage the component. Remember, always allow reagents to reach room temperature. Check the desiccant pack included in the pouch. It should be blue as shown. If it looks pink, do not use the plate and contact us immediately. Standard preparation. Thoroughly read the standard preparation instructions in the kit protocol. Label tubes and add the appropriate volume of assay buffer to each tube. Standards may contain organic solvents to stabilize the molecule. Ensure that you fully equilibrate the pipette prior to pipetting this stock. Read the instructions that came with your pipettes for pipetting organic solvents. Continue to prepare standards as described in the kit protocol. Pipetting the assay. Outline the position of each sample on the assay layout sheet provided on the back page of each kit protocol. Our break apart strip well plates allow you to use just the wells you need for your experiment. If you pipette your standards and samples down the columns, you'll be able to get the best usage from the kit. Carefully pipette standards and samples into the defined wells using a fresh pipette tip for each standard or sample. Make sure that you use duplicate wells for each standard and sample. Pipette the standards and samples towards the bottom of the well. To add the assay specific reagents, the conjugate and the antibody, use a repeater pipette. Use a clean repeater pipette tip for each assay specific reagent. Add the assay specific reagents and ensure that you do not splash during that addition. Tap the side of the plate to gently mix. If you are using a non-repeating or single tip pipette to add conjugate or antibody, pipette the conjugate towards the top of the well. Add the antibody on the other side of the well, also towards the top of the well. If the protocol requires shaking, use a plate shaker that will ensure thorough mixing of the well reagents. Put the plate on a plate shaker or orbital shaker. Shaking the plates will speed up the reaction taking place in the wells. Shake the plate so that the well contents move, but do not shake too rapidly to lose the contents of the wells. Note the time and temperature that the reaction was initiated and set a timer for the incubation time specified in the kit protocol. At the end of the incubation time, wash the plate 
the specified number of times with the wash buffer provided. Peroxidase conjugates are inhibited by sodium azide, which may be provided in some other manufacturer's wash buffers. Make sure that you thoroughly wash the plate washer with our wash buffer prior to using. If you do not have a plate washer, see if someone else close by does. Make sure that there is no azide in their washer. Remember, azide will inhibit color formation. If you cannot find a plate washer close by, we suggest that at the end of the incubation time, you dump the contents of the wells down the drain. Fill each well with the kit-specific wash buffer from a wash bottle. Dump the contents into the sink and repeat four times. To prepare the chemiluminescent substrate, mix one part of substrate solution A with one part of substrate solution B in a brown bottle. This mixture can be stored at 4 degrees centigrade for up to one month. This assay requires use of a plate reader capable of measuring glow chemiluminescence. This reader is called a luminometer. All luminometers read relative light units or RLUs. These RLU readings will vary with the make or model of the plate reader. The number of RLUs obtained is dependent on the sensitivity and gain of the reader being used. If you are unsure of how to properly configure your reader, contact your plate reader manufacturer. Alternatively, on page 6 of the clear kit insert, there is a protocol to run a dilution of the assay conjugate to get an idea of the intensity generated by the maximum binding wells for the assay. Refer to page 6 of the clear inserts for full details. Add the substrate mixture to the wells using a repeater pipette designated for the mixture. Allow the substrate to incubate for five minutes prior to reading in the luminometer. The substrate incubation can occur on the bench top. Insert the plate into the luminometer and read each well for 100 milliseconds.